is a time lapse of us putting up our Goldfield Sovereign Camper. You can see that we both do the stands on each side. We tend to work out our jobs. Um, each one has just automatically got our own jobs. It wasn't anything we discussed. We store stuff in there, so getting that out takes a little bit longer as well. Um, I do the poles on the inside. I just choose to do some windows as I go or the press studs. Um, and then we set up the kitchen. So it does not take very long. It's pretty easy to do. We now even take our time a little bit more. So it's 16 minutes. Um, we could do it quicker and sometimes we just do it slower. Hey guys, uh, just wanted to give a bit of a video about uh, our Goldfields uh, Sovereign Camper, just about the outside of it so far. Uh, we picked this up uh, in April 2022. It's now uh, the end of August. Uh, we've been on the road for two weeks so far, uh, doing a lot of outback roads in New South Wales and South Australia. Um, so as you'll see, it's, it's a bit dirty and dusty at the moment, but it's just a few things that we've noticed over the, uh, the last couple of weeks. So starting at the front, it's got a BA35 hitch, which is uh, very easy to use. Um, great for off-roading and that sort of thing. Uh, haven't had any issues with that. Very easy to attach to the car. Comes with a, a you can call it a brake, emergency brake release thing. I, I don't know, technical stuff. Chains and stuff. Uh, comes with a Anderson plug, which will charge your batteries as you're driving. Now, we did have a bit of an issue a couple of days ago on the Strees Lakey track where we came out of the socket and uh, we lost it. Pretty much it got shredded on the track. So, I'll show you what we did for that. Uh, the handbrake itself, pretty easy to use. Lift up. It's got hot and cold water for your, um, your secondary tank, which is a 40 litre tank. Pretty handy if you want to fill up a bucket or wash your feet or something like that. Um, very easy to use. We'll show you where the pump is in a sec. Now, the front of the uh, camper, when it uh, um, comes with two gas, two nine kilo gas bottle holders and two jerry can holders, I, I found that the jerry can holders are pretty tight. Uh, you do need to remove the rubbers that are in there because I have a bit zoom in. Thanks, Kari. <laughs> uh, yeah, you might need to take these off or remove them to uh, get your jerry cans in. We've got one gas bottle here and we've got a bag of firewood on the other side because uh, where we're going there's not much firewood at the moment. You can see from the, from our adventures the, uh, the, the checker plate at the front has copped a bit of a beating um, but everything else and we've lost reflectors on each side so far but nothing major. Uh, everything else is holding up pretty well. Uh, my boy Dylan put this uh, pipe on uh, tubing. We put um, extra um, the annex poles and the window poles in there that we don't use. So we just store those in there. It just gives us a bit more room down the back if we get to. Um, the fridge, the fridge is in here. Come around here, young lady. All right, now Goldfield supply this hundred litre companion uh, fridge freezer. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty dirty at the moment because we've copped a heap of dust over the last few days. Um, some people have had issues with it. So far, it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, keeps everything cold. Uh, if you have a quick look inside, uh, we haven't got much in there at the moment. That's the freezer side. And that's currently set at minus three. And obviously on the fridge side, a bit bigger. Heaps of space in there as well. There's, so there's just the two of us. So we don't need a heap of food. A couple of things about this though. The plug on the side for the fridge to charge it is just one of these accessory type plugs that you might find in a cigarette lighter or something like that. That just plugs in on the side there. But it does have a tendency of getting caught when you slide it in and out. Another thing I've noticed, you need to have the fridge pretty much right up to this, the front of the drawer here. Because when you open it on your camper, sometimes it bangs against the side. Bit of a funny ass sometimes. Um, now I'll just show you a couple more things. It's a, it's, it's a huge fridge slide, 100 litre fridge, pretty big. What you do need to do, make sure when you close it, that this, the lock in here, is pushed right in. We had uh, problems a couple of times when it wasn't pushed in and it, the fridge had actually, the slide had come out a little bit. So we couldn't actually open this this uh, latch. Had to get a screwdriver and sort of jam it open a bit, which is not ideal. Um, just because the fridge has come forward just a fraction. 
Um, what I did with the Anderson plug, there was one attached here, which uh, you could use for uh, another solar panel or plugging your fridge into. Where we were when we noticed that the plug uh, disappeared uh, was in the middle of Outback South Australia, so supplies were uh, pretty scarce. So I had to cut that plug off and attach it uh, to the front so that we can uh, get uh, charge the batteries as we're going along from the car and even from the solar panel, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, we've then got the pantries. Okay, heaps of space in here. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of dust on the, on the front. That's probably from us touching it because we're filthy. Um, but heaps of space. Heaps of space. Both the drawers here. Um, what you do might know, might need to know, anything up the top is going to move around, especially on the rough corrugated roads that we've been on. So half the time when we open up, things tend to fall down a little bit. So just be aware of that sort of thing. Uh, apart from that, no other dust has been getting into that at all, which is great. Uh, we'll show you the, uh, the inside of another video. We've got our little drop-down table here, which does lock in. It's got plenty of dust as well, but you've got your accessory plugs there and a USB plug, which has got your uh, two plugs there. The funny thing about it is one is a 1 amp and one is a 2.1 amp, so as Curry said, why would you want to show something slowly? You know, make them both two, two amp. Anyway, very handy, very handy. Check your phones, torches, watches, whatever, uh, to charge up while you're out sitting outside. I'll leave that down for a sec. This is the fridge. Oh, it's not the fridge, it's the kitchen. Uh, slides out. I won't do a full setup, but uh, just to show you a couple of things that we found about it. First up, the stove. It's a four burner stove. Really, you don't need a four burner stove. I'll just quick demo. Big ass fry pan. Most people have got something this size. When you put that on, you can use maybe one other. Okay, you really need just one big, one big burner, two small ones. I don't know why a lot of these companies think that more is better. It doesn't work. That's my gripe. The other gripe with the stove, um, everything moves. Everything scratches, especially when you're on dirt corrugated roads. We put these bits of foam in here, but as you can see, everything's getting scratched. And uh, yeah. And I know that I'm a voice behind the camera and you can't see me, but those scratches happened from the moment we picked it up. So we picked it up and we drove about an hour away. And when we opened up the kitchen, it was all scratched up. Yep. And so it's not just the corrugated roads. Um, so, there, you know, it's, it's hard to make it look nice when it's got all of those scratches yep. constantly on it. Yep. That's all. This bracket here holds these uh, little burner plates down, but nothing stops these from moving around. So that's where half the damage comes. Uh, we put bits of foam in between these panels, which do that, you know, your wind brakes and stuff. But as you can see, they're still sliding around, <laughs> sliding around and getting scratches and scuff marks and stuff. So not ideal. Anyway, good cutlery drawer, plenty of space. Little accessory drawer, which has got your hose for your for your uh, for your water, your drain pipe, and anything else that you want to chuck in here. You now, just a, one brief thing that I want to show you with this is your. Sorry, everything's filthy at the moment. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Hose for your water. Before I get to that, just a little things like this that golfers could improve on a little bit. We've got hot and cold water. They've just written H and C, H and C. Okay, hot and cold, but at least color code them. Make it look a bit, little bit nicer, a bit more professional. That's our gripe. To get your water in, you've got to squeeze your hand in here, try and push that down and push the hose in. Now, I'm not terribly dexterous. I don't have very big hands either. To get that off, it's a, sometimes it's a real pain in the ass to do. It's just not practical. When you're working in the kitchen and you've got stuff here, you're preparing stuff, there's, there's just not much room. I don't know, just my gripe, I'm, I'm griping. <laughs> um, 
Another accessory plug here. You got your pumps for your front water tank and your rear water tank. Um, I don't know if you can hear this, but just gotta plug the water in, but it won't work. But the plug, the pump itself is is pretty loud. Just not gonna do it now unless it's plugged in. But it is loud. Anyway, my grub. Uh, yeah, guys, uh, sorry about the condition of the uh, the sink. As we said, it's uh, pretty dusty where we've been, and we'll uh, we'll give it a good clean before we have it. Uh, one further thing I mentioned, wanted to mention was the plug that comes with the Goldfields Campus, or the Sovereign anyway. It's cheap plastic. That's what it sits in inside the drain there. It doesn't seal. It's really it's not worth the money that it's made of. The plastic it's made of. So what I've done is, I'll just sneak around here. I've just gone to Bunnings. It's a, somewhere between a $15 and $20 pop-up plug. Uh, very easy to fit in. No tools really required, apart from a bit of maybe a big spanner. You just screw it in underneath. Um, it's watertight, it's good quality, it's not cheap plastic, um, and it does a much better job. So probably one of the first things you want to do if you're going to be spending more on an item away. storage boxes which I find uh, to be pretty useful for anything long. We've got our NX poles in here and our, uh, our, our awning poles as well. Um, and up the top is pretty much all our firewood that I've, we've sort of brought along and collected as we go. So kind of handy. It goes all the way through. Uh, I've got my fire poker there as well. Pretty cool. Uh, coming around this side. Oh. If you do get one of these, get yourself a stool, two or three steps at minimum. I'm 5'10", and I can't reach the top to uh, put the annex zip on, even with the roof loaded down. So, and also the winch at the back. You need to stand up on here to make everything happen. So get yourself a stool. Um, around to this side is the other side of the toolbox. As you can see, I've got a shovel in there, axe, I've got a, uh, a battery operated chainsaw, which is what I've used a few times, cut a lot of that wood into bits and pieces, which fit in here. Uh, a couple of bits of recovery gear there, pretty handy sort of toolbox. So Goldfields have done well with that. In here is just the, the back of the kitchen and your water pump. Um, that's, yeah, as I said, it's pretty loud when it's working, but we don't use a lot of water, so it's got all right. Um, you can also use that as a bit of a storage place if you wanted to. If you want to set your hot water up, uh, your hot water system for your shower or you know, for your kitchen or whatever, that's your in and out. Again, they could have done that a little bit better. Um, but we haven't used that yet, so I can't comment on how effective that is. Um, rear water tank, 120 litres. Front water tank's 40 litres, so you've got uh, 160 litres of water, which is pretty cool. In here is your, your gauges, your electrical setup, a bit dusty. Uh, you got your rear tank, which we're at three quarters full, front tank, same. Um, currently at 100% battery capacity, which we have two A100 amp hour AGM batteries. Uh, so they're full. Uh, switches for everything. I tend to turn these accessory play, uh, plugs off uh, while we're driving, just keep the fridge going. Slide. Use this for all our tools and recovery gear and fire lighters and all sorts of crap really. Pretty handy sort of drawer though. A uh, bit more storage space up the top which I've got some jackets stuffed in. You can also access it from inside the camper. Uh, not too much dust getting in there. It's mainly on the sides there. A bit through the seals but we've been through some pretty dusty sort of roads out back South Australia. So pretty hardcore. Uh, big front storage compartment. Now, when you pick up your camp, brand new, you usually have your annex and your floor and your awning all nicely folded in here. Um, we did until we used the annex and the floor and everything else. <laughs> and of course, it doesn't compact as uh, nice and neatly as uh, what you get when it's brand new. But 
you've got the quarter potty that comes with it. Uh, you've got the hot water system, which I said we haven't used yet, so it's still in the box, fire extinguisher. Get yourself a food grade hose for when you're filling your tanks, otherwise your water will taste like rubber hose. Not so nice. Um, toilet's pretty easy to use, pretty easy to clean. I've only used it a couple of times. Um, yep. Yeah. Almost round to the front. Uh, the solar panel that comes with the uh, with the Goldfields campus uh, with their with our slogan, it's 160 watt ATEM atom um, solar panel. I wasn't sure how it was going to go over extended periods of time uh, where we're not driving and charging the batteries while we're running the fridge uh, constantly. It's actually been pretty good. It charges the batteries. It gets up to 100% um, over a five day period while we're outside of Broken Hill at the Monday Monday Bash. Uh, I don't think we got below 65% battery capacity and it's using the solar panels each day. So that was pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, there's the uh, what's left of the cable that was uh, shredded on the track. So I've pretty much just taken the Anderson plug from the inside, reattached it, um, and hopefully that'll last for a while until we get home at least. Uh, and the last thing I want to mention is this jockey wheel. Now. It's a pretty basic jockey wheel. A lot of people have had issues with it uh, as far as maneuvering and stuff. We haven't had a lot of maneuvering, so it hasn't been a problem as far as that goes, but the whole latching system, where it, just to lock it into place, it just doesn't, it's just pr pretty cheap. Um, I think we will uh, upgrade to, uh, was it the Arco 750 or something like that. Everyone seems to be using, seems to have a good reputation. So we'll probably go with something like that at some stage. Um, apart from that, it's doing the job at the moment, but yeah, it does feel a bit cheap. Um, pretty much it. If you've got any questions or comments, please uh, put them on the uh, uh, below the video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. It's my first real walk around video. So um, I'll do another one on the Jeep at some stage, but uh, thanks for watching. Cheers. Just thought we'd give you another look at the drawers and storage components of the camper. So this is a pantry, two big drawers. They're super deep, which is really, really good. And there's a shelf above to put other stuff in as well. We store stuff beside the fridge there as well. Um, it's just a little bit easier. Then you've got a smaller drawer, which we chose to put sort of sink stuff in and some glad wrap and whatnot. Um, and then the cutlery drawer. And it's got quite a few compartments. Personally, I'd rather not have compartments. You'd fit more in there, but you know, you're gonna be able to find what you can find, I guess. Another time lapse, this time of us closing up the camper. So I normally go inside and do the poles. It's super windy, so you can see that end bit just kept popping back up again with the wind. Um, I just strapped down the bed, which is super easy. It's just got four straps. Take off all the poles. I'm usually on the winder. Josh feeds the strap along, does all the feet and legs. You can see the wind helped us with that. It was really quite quick and easy to do. I think all up, it's about 15 minutes to pack it all up. It's not a big deal at all and we don't mind it. It's not a hassle.